Hello dear friends, glad to be back. Today is 7th of December. I'm Levan Gudadzin. This is my second update for a day in which I will share latest reports of Russian Defense Ministry about progress of special military operation in Ukraine in previous 24 hours. Um, quite interesting report and hopefully you will find this video also interesting and if so please click that like button leave some commentary and share video with your video friends it will definitely help me to reach wider audience and the deal with the immensely unfair and uh, aggressive youtube algorithms uh, algorithm and dear friends if you did not yet uh, seen my first update which is packed with the uh, with the uh, interesting and relevant news in my understanding please do so if you have a uh, if you have a time that's been said uh, let's talk about a uh, news itself now and first of all kupiansk direction which is here by the way northern sector of the front line and uh, according to russian defense ministry units of uh, west group of forces of russian army with the uh, support of helicopter aviation and also artillery repelled uh, five local scale counteroffensives of uh, assault groups of 41st mechanized and 57th motorized infantry brigades of armed forces of uh, Ukraine near Sinkovka, which is Kharkov region, and also Lake Liman. Uh, Ukrainian losses mounted up to 75 military personnel, two tanks, four armored personnel carriers, two pickup trucks, one German made Panzer Haubitz self prepare artillery system, one US made M198 Howitzer and one D-30 field gun. Quite a number of uh, losses on part of Ukrainian side, uh, part on part of Kyiv regime, although uh, not as high, uh, not as high as on some uh, other sectors of the front line. And when it comes to Kupiansk sector, this is city of Kupiansk, dear friends, which is divided by Oskol River almost in a, in a half and forward units of Russian forces are just in several kilometers away from city itself and uh, this uh, infamous let's say Sinkovka settlement which is uh, constantly disputed between Ukrainian armed forces are here uh, on the northern eastern part of uh, Kupiansk city itself right next to this forestry and this settlement uh, lately, for quite a while really, but especially lately, did become yet again hotspot on Kupiansk direction. And uh, Ukrainian and Russian forces are conducting operations, local scale skirmishes, local scale reckoning force and uh, um, counteroffensive or offensive operations on daily, on daily basis. And as a result of it, uh, Ukrainian side did lost during the previous 24 hours up to 75 military personnel and uh, quite a few military equipment next is Krasny Liman direction lately Krasny Liman direction did become significantly active sector of the front line in comparison to other areas this is Krasny Liman dear friends entire this uh, square we can uh, say around uh, around Seversk northern part of uh, Seversk mainly and uh, well, according to Russian, according to Russian Defense Ministry, the center group of forces of Russian army, uh, together with the uh, artillery, repelled two local-scale counteroffensives launched by 24th Mechanized Brigade and 44th Separate Rifle Battalion of Armed Forces of Ukraine, close to Dzerzhinsk and Yampolovka, Donetsk People's Republic. As a result of local scale clashes, artillery duels between the sides, reckoning force operations and local scale um, offensive operations, Ukrainian forces lost uh, 280, up to 280 military personnel, two infantry fighting vehicles and two motor vehicles. Uh, also two US made M109 Paladin self-prepared artillery systems were hit during the counter-battery uh, warfare. Um, lately, it did become quite clear that uh, Russian forces do have significant upper hand when it comes to counter-battery fighting uh, with the uh, Ukrainian forces. Um, maybe because the um, Ukrainian side lost its counter-battery radar systems. Uh, maybe because uh, the artillery, the Western uh, uh, 
uh, made artillery systems uh, are not as accurate because they did not have uh, good enough maintenance maybe because of uh, lack of competency among uh, artillerymen of ukrainian side whatever the reason but russian forces definitely have significant upper hand when it comes to artillery duels and i did share on my telegram page uh, many videos when russian artillerymen are successfully targeting ukrainian uh, positions of uh, howitzers and 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 so on without being targeted uh, back and uh, as i said this is by the way this is by the way krasny liman direction uh, Ukrainian forces had the most casualties during the previous 24 hours exactly in this uh, sector. 200, up to 280 military personnel, as Russian Defense Ministry reported. Usually it's Donetsk sector of the front line that uh, are most active, but previous 24 hours were a little different, and it was uh, Krasny Liman on which uh, Ukrainian side suffered the most casualties on the front. But next uh, is definitely Donetsk sector of the front line, where units of South Group of Forces of Russian Army, with support of aviation and artillery, repelled two local scale counteroffensives launched by assault groups of 67th Mechanized Brigade of Ukrainian Armed Forces near Klishevka, which is Donetsk People's Republic. And uh, according to uh, Russian Defense Ministry, Ukrainian forces lost in Donetsk direction in Donetsk sector. 175 uh, military personnel as well as three armored fighting vehicle two motor vehicle uh, also one u.s made m1109 paladin self prepared artillery system two acacia self prepared artillery system one guazdika self prepared artillery system one d certified field artillery piece and uh, one u.s made m119 gun Yet again, quite a number of casualties and also destroyed military equipment. One may wonder how many artillery pieces, artillery systems Ukraine still has uh, left because uh, reports about destruction of uh, dozens and dozens of uh, artillery equipment is coming on daily basis. And of course, when we're talking about Donetsk sector, it's uh, this direction, dear friends, main hotspot are Avdevka, of course, Avdevka, and also flanks of Bakhmut, and uh, as Russian Defense Ministry reported, Ukrainian forces did try to conduct local-scale uh, offensive in Klishevka area to regain control over the some territories that they lost during the previous days as a result of successful Russian offensive operations, but they failed, and Klishevka and Andreevka is our... Uh, under Russian control, although some may say these settlements are still in the in the gray zone because uh, both villages are decimated. There is no single building standing in those villages and uh, basically there is nowhere to hide really. So yes, one may say that these settlements, uh, these two settlements are in the gray zone. And also, of course, Avdevka, Avdevka direction where Russian forces on daily basis improving, improving positions uh although we are not yet talking about final assault on uh, on city itself i believe final assault on Odeco will begin in about two three weeks time if situation is ready if russian side believes that ukrainian forces will uh, significant number of ukrainian garnison or ukrainian forces in Odeco will lay down arms and surrender without putting up fight then uh, i guess um, we will see russian final push on Avdevka in two three weeks time but if uh, if russian side is not sure about it then uh, i guess this um, encirclement or blockade of Avdevka will continue as long as it takes to make to persuade basically officers and uh, military personnel of uh, as many ukrainian officers and military personnel as possible uh, to lay down arms and surrender and not to die for zelensky and his criminal associates of course uh, marinka dear friends uh, when it comes to donetsk sector of the front line is also a hotspot uh, usually always 
and uh, well you know that uh, during the previous days there were reports that Marinka is entirely under Russian control now and Russian forces are beginning to conduct operations in direction of <coughs> excuse me <laughs> Kurahovo this settlement here but yet again it's uh, difficult to say it's quite possible that several several streets on the northern western part of Marinka or several buildings maybe still are occupied by Ukrainian military personnel but battle for Avdevka is, battle for Marinka sorry definitely is over because 95 98 percent of the settlement is uh, for sure under Russian control let's continue now with some um, additional report of Russian defense ministry next is uh, Zaporozhye direction Ru units of uh, Russian Oh, so Donetsk sector of the front line, sorry. Next, so uh, units of uh, East Group of Forces of Russian Army supported by ground attack aircraft, helicopters and uh, artillery inflicted losses on manpower and hardware of 23rd mechanized 58th uh, motorized infantry and 128th territorial defense brigades of Ukrainian armed forces near Slatkova, Slatkova. Uh, Nikolska and Urajaina Donetsk People's Republic. As a result of uh, clashes in the uh, South Donetsk sector of the front line, Ukrainian forces lost up to 160 military personnel, two armored fighting vehicles, three motor vehicles, and one US made M777 artillery system. Quite high number, <coughs> quite high number of casualties on part of Ukrainian forces in South Donetsk direction, which is uh, uh, which which is um, not surprising at this uh, point because for last several days we did clearly see intensification of clashes and uh, basically Russian offensive uh, operations in uh, South Donetsk direction. Uh, I mean, at least for uh, at least for a week now, Russian forces are very active in this uh, direction, even more than a week. And as a result of it, Ukrainian forces have a, have a ca heavy casualties in this um, area. Main hotspot, main hotspot is of course uh, um, somewhat uh, partially Oglidar direction, but mainly mainly this Removsky salient and uh, surrounding surrounding areas where Russian forces are quite close to regain control over the, all the settlements that they hold before Ukrainian so-called counteroffensive began on June of uh, 4. Let's continue with the uh, Zaporozhye sector of the front line now and uh, according to Russian Defense Ministry units of Russian group of forces supported by aviation and artillery struck a cluster of uh, manpower of um, 33rd mechanized brigade of armed forces of Ukraine in Rabotino area which is a uh, Zaporozhye sector of the front line and according to latest reports uh, Ukrainian side in this direction lost about 60 military personnel two motor vehicles as well as two Gvozdika self-prepared self-propelled artillery systems and uh, well this is their friends uh, Zaporozhye sector of the front line main hotspot is of course Orekhov so-called Orekhov bridgehead where uh, Ukrainian forces uh, are clashing directly with Russian side in Rabotina area which is uh, formally controlled by Ukrainian side by Ukrainian military personnel but as time goes by uh, they did find it more and more difficult to hold on to, to positions to maintain their foothold in this uh, settlement entire this bridgehead is a big trap for Ukrainian forces and I guess many of them many Ukrainian military personnel did already know this uh, if they are clever enough, they will lay down arms and surrender. If not, then, uh, well, they only can blame on themselves. Uh, there is two main hotspots at this point in uh, uh, Arejo Bridgehead, Rabotina area and uh, Verbova direction, where Russian forces are on regular basis conducting local scale offensive operations. And dear friends, a few minutes ago, I did share on my Telegram this video uh, captured uh, by Russian uh, soldiers, uh, German uh, Leopard 2 tank, German Leopard 2 tank, and uh, even though 
on the video was no description about area where this happened i guess this is my guess dear friends that this leopard 2 tank was uh, captured exactly in orechov bridgehead although uh, let's see let's see if uh, some additional information will be available i guess it's only a matter of time and this leopard 2 as well as many other western made uh, military equipment will find its way to russian um, expositions of uh, of uh, captured weapons of uh, ukrainian air forces and um, nato member states but anyway let's uh, let's continue with the um, let's continue with the report of russian defense ministry and uh, finally of course Kherson sector of the front line Kherson direction where uh, russian troops with assistance of artillery and uh, air air force um, uh, defeated Ukrainian armed forces in uh, Chervoni Mayak area where and uh, as a result of uh, Russian artillery strikes air strikes uh, missile strikes Ukrainian forces and of course drone strikes Ukrainian forces lost in this uh, direction 65 uh, military personnel killed and wounded um, also two motor vehicles one was Zika self prepared artillery system uh, and uh, well this is a uh, Kherson direction this is Kherson direction dear friends in which Ukrainian side still holds to small footholds in Krinki <coughs> in Krinki area also right next to Antonovsky bridge not far away from Aleshki settlement uh, also this railway bridge dear friends uh, but uh, as i said many times before left bank of the Dnieper river is a trap for ukrainian forces and uh, during this so-called Kherson offensive of uh, Kyiv regime they already lost ukrainian army already lost uh, more than a brigade if we combined uh, all the casualty numbers and uh, destroyed military equipment it was a trap for the very beginning and i was saying this uh, many know not many people believe initially my reading of uh, big picture but at this point i guess uh, there can be no doubts that uh, left bank of the Dnieper river definitely was a trap and still is a trap for ukrainian forces and uh, this is it uh, when it comes to report latest report of russian defense ministry about uh, about um, uh, previous 24 hours on the on the front line on the front line in uh, in ukraine about progress yes about progress of special military operation in uh, in previous 24 hours and let me share with you some additional information dear friends i want to show you this uh, this video here about conditions that uh, units military units on both sides i guess but in this particular case this is a, a ukrainian uh, tranche Ukrainian a unit that's conditions that they are um, operating let's say and uh, this is condition of the roads as you can see it clearly looks like river of mud <clears throat> it's Rasputin and I guess this is um, this is central or southern sectors of the of the front line in the northern sectors ground is probably already a little bit frozen uh, i guess on the video there was no description where exactly these videos were made and you can see these videos dear friends on my telegram uh, channel link is under this video in description box or in the pinned comment and uh, finally i'll share with you uh, just one more uh, news about the significant activization of russian drgs russian uh, <clears throat> sabotage groups on the northern uh, regions in the northern regions of uh, kiev controlled territory around sumi and uh, chernigov and even the ukrainian side even ukrainian media ukrainian um, military channels are now beginning and this pro-ukrainian map by the way even forced to acknowledge that basically russian sabotage groups are operating quite freely and uh, quite successfully in uh, in the northern sectors of the northern flag northern regions of ukraine and um, these uh, icons with rifles 
are exactly the areas where Russian sabotage groups were active during the previous week. Which is also quite interesting development. Maybe, maybe some preparations have, have begun for a possible uh, for possible large-scale Russian offensive, uh, not just in the current line of uh, contact, but also in the direction of Sumy and Chernigov. Who knows? This is just guess. But uh, what we can know for sure is that Russian sabotage groups are very active, very active in northern regions of uh, Kiev-controlled territory. And this is it for now. This is it for now. Hopefully you will find this uh, update interesting. And if so, please, dear friends, click that like button. Leave some commentary about any topic you like. And uh, please share video with your friends. Uh, it will definitely help to reach wider audience and, and um, deal with this extremely unfair and aggressive YouTube algorithm, especially uh, towards channels that are uh, based in Russia. And uh, if you think this uh, this project with several channels on YouTube, Rumble and Telegram are interesting, useful, informative and deserve to exist in this field of news and political commentary, please consider to support my work with small donations through PayPal, buy me a coffee and by subscribing uh, to my Patreon page. You can see links under this video in the description box or in the pinned comment. This is it for now. Have a great day and take care. See you soon.